Back again, your favorite mechanic, Alex the Car Doctor. It's a lovely morning out. A great morning to be working on a Dodge or Chrysler vehicle. I have a charger here today, came in for a no start. I'm gonna be figuring out what's going on with that today. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I don't know if you heard it on the um, film, but the battery is dead, so I need to charge it up before I start properly diagnosing the vehicle. This engine is the 3.5. One of my favorite Chrysler V, um, one of my favorite Chrysler engines. I, I was gonna say vehicles, but that don't make no sense. <laughs> one of my favorite Chrysler engines. They're pretty good. I don't expect too many issues out of this engine. This engine is pretty good, like I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and get the battery charged up now because you can't diagnose nothing with a low or dead battery. So I'll be seeing you guys in a little bit after this battery charge up. Just got the battery charge all hooked up. I probably leave it back charging for about an hour. I don't just work on Dodge. I work on a wide variety of vehicles, but that's what's been coming into the shop lately. Get the hint. <laughs> Anywho, Dodge, other cars, they all have their issues, but people bring their Dodge Chrysler Jeeps to me. I guess I make them leave happy. I have another Chrysler up here. That one's been the transmission. That one. It's a funny story behind that one. It, had, it needs a transmission. A mobile mechanic called himself putting in the transmission and just totally butchered the job. It was, ooh, it was a mess. And like I said, I do work on other things. This one getting some suspension work, uh, rear main seal, just to get you a general feel from what I did here. Not only Dodge. charging the battery got my nurse nando with me today hey, how's it going guys yeah. <laughs> say hello nando <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm gonna turn it over and let you guys hear it now with the battery charged up that's another good test you can do just crank it over listen to the motor i'm gonna show you that now go ahead and spin it over nando take this and plug it in see Ready? yep All right, that sounds pretty good. What you're listening for is like a, um, the, <laughs> I hate making it just sounds, but I'm gonna make it for you guys today. You're listening for the choo 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 choo, but it's somebody's like gonna it... <laughs> rip you in the comments. Choo choo. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Choo choo. Mm -hmm. But that's what you're listening for. You're listening for a consistent choo 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 choo. But this one was making a little funny noise. It was like choo 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 choo. <laughs> <laughs> that can mean a lot of things. Um, the main, I know, the main engine failure of these three fives is the timing belt. They are, they are timing belt driven, and a lot of people neglect the timing belt, and it will break, causing it to bend valves. And if it does break, it'll sound more like a sewing machine. It, it sounds more like, like a nice smooth. You won't hear no bounce up and down. So. It sounds, that's like a listening compression test. Not very accurate, but that's what I just did there. The next test I'm going to do because the engine need a couple of things to run. Fuel, air, compression, spark, and it needs to be able to breathe. So the first thing I'm gonna check is make sure the air filter, I know it's silly, but sometimes if the air filter is stopped up, it can cause the vehicle not to start and like cutting off your air supply. You can't really do much. So, air filter looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna skip, cause I kinda, kind of already know what it could be, but for video purposes, I'm gonna show you anyway. The next thing I'm gonna check for spark. I wasn't gonna show it, but for video purposes, I'm gonna show it. So I'm gonna check for spark next. I'll be right back with the popper things I need to check for that. All right, got the tools to do the test. Now I'm very cheap. There's actually a tool for this. It's called a spark plug tester. Uh, but I normally take a regular spark plug. But you gotta be careful doing it this way because you can get electrocuted. <laughs> Being <laughs> hit by thousands of volts is not fun. 
So be very careful. So what I like to do, and this may take two people, or what I used to do by myself back when my mobile mechanic days, I used to set my phone up right here, hit record, and turn the car over. And what we're looking for is the spark jump. All right, turn it over, Nando. No spark. Do it again. Oh, I seen a spark. Oh, do it again just to make sure. All right, I guess it wasn't that cylinder turn, but it is sparking. So I'm gonna move on. Next thing I'm gonna check for is code. You can take the camera over to Fernando. He explained what codes we have. All right, we got a PO303. That's a cylinder three misfire detected. And we also got a PO463. That's a fuel level sensor A circuit high. We have a P2068 fuel level sensor B circuit high. We have a P0562 system voltage low. That's from the dead battery, obviously. P0463. And that's also the fuel level sensor A circuit. And then we have the repeats as okay. pending. Let me see. Okay. All right, so someone was messing around with this car prior to it being bought here. So they probably could have just unplugged the, <laughs> the, the fuel pump plug the main plug for the fuel pump i do recall them saying something about that um the next thing we're gonna do i know it's getting air i know it's getting spark i did see indication of spark um i didn't have any crank codes crank um crank signal codes like crankshaft positioning sensor normally when you have codes like that you won't get spark so i know that's good I did have a misfire code that could be fuel related. So next thing I'm gonna check is the fuel pump, making sure the fuel pump is coming on because if the fuel pump is not coming on, this car is not gonna fire over. So I'm gonna check that now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Crush Nando. I'm sorry, Fernando. All right. So the fuel pumps that's located are located on these, I think, from 05. Did they make charges in 05? I know they made Magnum. They started the Magnum in 05, didn't they? Okay. So any charger type laid out vehicle, I know, I do know that the fuel pump is always in the same location under the seat here. So I'm going to pull back the... And you just kind of lift up real hard. This one wasn't even connected. That let me know someone hasn't been back here already. And let me get my tester. Keep that. You can come. Oh. So, all right. Now, it's easy to find the main power wires because they're always going to be the thickest. I don't know if you can see on camera, these two are very like thin and these two are the thick wires. So these are the power wires and these are like the fuel level wires. So I'm going to probe it and see what type of power reading I get. Turn it on the bolts. Now, if this is getting power, and you can also listen for the fuel pump too. If you stand back here and have someone just turn the key in the on position, it should send 12 volts momentarily, about a couple of seconds to the fuel pump, and you should hear a buzz. I kind of pre looked at it already, uh, you know, put my ear up to it before I took it down, and I didn't hear a buzz. So I already did that test off camera. That's why I was like, I kind of know what it is. All right, we're gonna be focused on, right now it's at millivolts. We're not focused on that. All right, turn the key on. And we're gonna see if we're getting voltage. 
12.6. We're getting battery voltage. And you see how I just went away? I don't know if you saw that on camera. So if we wasn't getting battery voltage, then I'll be looking into like relays, wiring issues, things like that. A lot of people will replace fuel pumps. I've seen it time after time and it don't even be a fuel pump. It could be a ground issue, a cut wire, corroded wire, bad relay, a lot go into it. But thankfully I'm getting power here because I really don't feel like tracing down any more wires this week. I've been tracing down wire problems all week and guess what? It's been on Chrysler vehicles. So I'm going to end the test right here, but for a couple of tips, if it was exhaust related, meaning if the catalytic converter was stopped up, sometime it'll crank up, and but you would have like skipping issues once the car get hot, it just starts skipping, low power, things like that because the car is not breathing well. Uh, another indication the catalytic converter stopped up, it can start glowing, but that can be also another indication of the car is running too rich or too lean. So it's a lot to go into this stuff, but this one has a bad fuel pump. I'm gonna re uh, recommend a fuel pump for this vehicle. Alex, the car doctor out. If you have any questions pertaining to this video, please comment. If you think I missed something, you know, write down in the comment. I love hearing from you guys. Y'all are like family. Y'all are like my little nurses, <laughs> so, so to speak. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Please like, subscribe. Alice the Car Doctor out.